In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to choose and register a web hosting provider. Well, the first thing that you need to do is to find a web host that has a good reputation. And to do that, you want to ask around, you want to look on um, marketing forums and web design forums and that sort of thing. And just simply ask around for recommendations and people who have used a particular web hosting company and are happy with it will come forward and say, yes, you should go with this particular company. And the next thing which um, relates to the first one really is how reliable uh, your web hosting company is. And then you want to see what the web hosting company offers. Do they just have sort of bog standard web hosting or do they offer other things as well? You know, do they offer cPanel and Fantastico, for example? Will they let you run PHP scripts and host MySQL databases? What about the software that comes included? Do they have WordPress or Joomla or shopping carts and so on? All these considerations need to shape your decision. And then there's the operating system uh, that the web hosting company runs their servers under. Most web hosting companies uh, run Linux some offer Windows, some offer both. You might need Windows if you're going to run certain back office operations, for example. And then there's the scalability issue with your hosting company. Are they going to be there to let you grow your website as your business grows? And then there's the price. And whilst nobody really wants to pay more than they have to, when it comes to web hosting, you get what you pay for. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. And that's all I think I really need to say on that subject. And then there's the customer support that your web hosting company offers. And this can be very, very important because once your website's down, um, then you're losing money. So you need to get it sorted out as soon as possible. So you need to be able to get onto your web hosting company right away if there's a problem. So does your web hosting company offer 24 hour live chat, for example, so you can communicate with someone any time of the day or night? Do they have a toll free number so that you can call them and speak to a real person and sort out the issue? Or do they just have an email help desk where you uh, submit a ticket and they get round to answering it when they feel like it? You know, all these sort of things had to be taken into consideration. And the final consideration is the server location, where the server is physically located. For 9 out of 10 people trading online, this doesn't really matter. You're trading internationally and where your server is doesn't really come into it. But for some people, it can be a very important consideration. For example, if you run um, a website for an offline business and most of your customers are local, then it makes sense to have a web server, if not locally in the same town, certainly within the same country, simply because you can then avoid currency fluctuations because the bills will be in your local currency. And then there are the legal issues. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this. But do bear in mind that every country is different. There are some things that are perfectly legal to do in your home country that might get you sent to jail if you do them somewhere else. Now, if you have your web hosting in a different country to the one where you live or where your business is based, you need to make sure that your website complies with the laws in both countries. Now, for most people, this isn't an issue at all. But if your website is on what might be considered a contentious subject, for example, you have an online gaming site or an adult website, or you sell products that are regulated like alcohol or pharmaceuticals or even if you're selling a product that's based on public domain content you know copyright laws are different in different countries so you have to take these into consideration so if you are in any doubt as to whether the legality of what you're doing in the country where your website is hosted is different from what you are at home, then the best thing to do is to have um, a web host 
in your home country and you could even go so far as to have your domain registration and credit card processing all in your same country as well because then it just falls under one jurisdiction and that's not legal advice it's just common sense and the final consideration is if you have your own server and you're just renting the rack space then obviously you want to make sure that the data center isn't all that far away so that if there is a problem you can get in your car and go down and sort it or get your engineer to go down and sort it. So like I say for 9 out of 10 people watching this video location isn't going to be a problem but if you're the 1 in 10 person then it's something that you need to consider very carefully. Now one company that has an excellent reputation and ticks a lot of the other boxes as well is HostGator which you'll find here at HostGator.com and it's very simple to sign up with HostGator and as you can see their prices aren't too bad either. What you do is come down to where it says view web hosting plans and it takes you to this page and you can see the different hosting plans and also what you get with them for example uh, they've got cPanel and MySQL databases and software like Joomla and WordPress and so on so let's say I'm just starting out and I decide I want to go with their so-called hatchling plan which you can find here all you have to do is click on the order now button takes you through to this page where you can either choose a domain name and HostGator will help you register it or you can enter an existing domain name if you have one already. I already have one that I'm going to use so I'm just going to enter it here. It's anothercompany.co.uk and if you have a uh, coupon code you can enter it here as you can see at the time that I'm making this video they have a special offer going so it's already been automatically entered in and then click to step two and this is basically where I put in all the billing information the username and the security pin number and then I enter all my uh, credit card information and so on and then read the terms and conditions of course and then click on the button here to create my account and what will happen next is HostGator will set this up for me and then they'll send me an email which will have the name servers listed and then what I'll do is change the name servers on my domain registrar so that they point to HostGator and that's it after it can be up to an hour or so to get it all set up but then I can simply log on to my website log into my cPanel start uploading all the data that I want to have on my website and hey presto I'm in business it's that simple